and welcome back everybody to part two. Next up, we have a non-title match between Arismont and Ritten. I haven't seen either one of these in quite some time on the show. Haven't seen any of what, Jack? Well, we haven't seen either Arismont nor Ritten. You mean, um, our potato people? Well, Lala's, Lala Fells. Well, you should have seen a few of them. I got eight of them in a cage right there. They're not well, I, we had a special guest. In. Well, I mean, in the ring, competing. Oh, I was about to say because it makes it makes it sound like you see them as less than regular Papa Toes, and I mean it less than regular. Like they're shorter than the other ones. It's if you know what I mean. Well, of course, Lala's are shorter than your average human. No, like they're shorter than the average Lala. Well, you can, yeah, they're short. It's what makes Lala's Lala's. So what do you, what do you mean? It's, so a short person can be a Lala just because of their height? Well, I find that fits with myself, and I don't like the guys. I hardly think it's. Offensive? I mean, Lala Fells are short. That, I oh, God, sis. You know, that is just the worst thing I've ever heard you say. And Arismont making his way to the ring. He's the current <laughs> Pompado <laughs> champion. This is a non-title match tonight. This little man's got potatoes on. <laughs> And I just burnt myself on a wire. That hurt. <laughs> maybe, you know, maybe if you took that wire and a potato and a light bulb, maybe you could have made electricity. <laughs> well, it's true. I wonder what would happen if we hooked that belt up. <laughs> I'm sure they'd, they'll be the brightest champion in the company. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is a common, uh, uncommonly unknown fact about our Lala champion. Even when he's standing on the middle rope, he's still only seven feet tall. Think about that. <laughs> Actually, with the weight restrictions of this game, that seems very accurate. Um. <laughs> Or the height, 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 weight. Well, of course it's very accurate. That's why I just told you it was a, a known mm. fact. Would you doubt it? Well, no, if not, if it's a known fact. Well, it's an unknown fact. That's why I told you. Now, you know one thing there, Jack, I wouldn't lie to you. Have I ever told you I was going to hit you with a shovel and never done it? I wouldn't lie to you. Mm, you've, you've hit me in the head with the shovel every time that you said that you were going to hit me in the head with the shovel. That is every true. Time. That's true, yeah. Every damn time. Yeah, and, and which reminds me, my doctor requests that you go a little bit lighter whenever you hit me in the head. The last skull fracture. Well. Oh, these two shaking hands right off the start. This is garbage. Looks like they're going to have a respectful match, something we haven't seen in the Lunar Blades Wrestling Federation in quite some time. What do you mean by that? Well, we have people attacking each other backstage. We have three-on-ones, two-on-ones. It's, <laughs> it's nice just to be able to sit and have a good, respectful match between two competitors. Well, people don't pay to come see good, respective matches. They pay to see people get hurt. And if the ratings come up short because of this, <laughs> you know why. Well, I highly doubt that uh, the ratings will come up short, as these two are both great competitors. I'm not doubting that. Yes, they are great competitors, but people like nefarious deeds being done to other people. It's just human nature there. Human nature. You know what I mean, Jack? Well, maybe that's uh, that's why we're having a respectful match. 
human nature, and these are two Lollafels. <laughs> I, I see you missed it there, Jack. Human. <laughs> are you making fun of my last name? <laughs> Why, yes, I am. It's a noble name that goes back thousands of years. It, it, it can be traced back to even the crappy Final Fantasy fourteen. <laughs> you know, the one before Realm Reborn? I, yeah, there was I like, there was your name John Bob Human. John Human. Bob Human. <laughs> Sally Human. Yeah. <laughs> From my understanding, another lesser known fact, your name went all the way back to Final Fantasy 2, where it first debuted as the first named Chamber Pot. <laughs> um, we we don't talk about that part of our history, please. <laughs> it, it's nothing wrong with embracing the fact that you know your shit. <laughs> it's it's we we keep that on the down low. A wristmon going for the pin, not even a one count. Tied him up in the ropes there. I guess he came up short there. Maybe not enough violence. And Arismon jumping off the top rope. I've got to say, we're watching a hell of a good match. I'm just, I'm getting so engrossed in it. It's, it's nice to see not... People not trying to absolutely kill each other, but to actually have a wrestling match in a wrestling ring. That's... It's turned into a uh, rare trait around here. Well. These two skills have piqued my interest a little, but um, I still prefer a tiny bit of violence here and there. You know? <clears throat> If it was up to you, they'd be in the in the ring with uh, swords and battle axes and crossbows, wouldn't they? Well, no, I wouldn't have swords, battle axes, and crossbows. That can tear up on beautiful ring and mess up the felt, and that's just horrible. They'd be in there with barbed wire bats and fire. It's a lot I, more efficient. I mean, <sighs> barbed wire bats and fire? Who does that? That's barbaric. Well, hey. Hey. That's, Isn't that a class? <laughs> That's how you looked at a warrior. You look like oh a barbarian to me. Like, I mean... Why don't you just give him a bunch of cactus, or else my name isn't Jack as well. You know? Fire and barbed wire bats. That wasn't meant for mankind. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if I ever got a hold were... of Raven, there would certainly be some dude love. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, I was about to say that there, Jack. You did have those things on standby, but the dude love corporation came through and said, oh, there's too much violence going on. <laughs> and Rismon picking yeah. up the win. It was a non-title match, and the champion walks out still as champion with another win underneath his belt. Well, that's why he's the champion, I suppose. I what would like it? to believe that Ren had a tiny chance of winning the, you know, tiny chance. <laughs> well, it was it was a wonderful match just to see these two respectful uh, competitors go up against each other. I wonder if Ren is feeling very respected while being dropped on his head throughout these replays. Do you think that feels respectful? I've been dropped on my head before, Jack, and it doesn't feel very damn respectful. Well, it all depends. Were you inside a ring? Yes. I started inside a ring and I was landing outside. What were you doing in the ring? You're not a wrestler. Well, I was in a ring of fire. And it burned, burned, burned. And then the flames went higher. I tell you, that ring of fire. Oh, that ring of fire. And that's also how my um, oldest brother actually died. But what? Then I came back in and I chopped his head off with a hatchet. And that's how I know you can't take hatchets and axes in rings.
See? Uh, so, wait, you... How many... How many dead brother? No, you know what? You know what? You know what? I don't want to know how many dead brothers you got. Um, do you do you yeah, have any sisters? I got none now. Yeah. Yeah. What happened to them? Well, the one living sister, she's working in Lemza as a um, as actually she's the um guild leader there in Lemza. So yeah, the guild leader. Yeah. You mean um, the grand company leader? I, I forget exactly. She, she, next time you go to Limsa, go to the end, you'll see a chick with a leaf over her head. Yeah, that's her. Told her she had to get that operated on, but she let the damn thing grow. Um, you? Yeah. That's next up, her. we have a tag, a tag team match. Looks like Chanik wants a little revenge on Maximo and Drago after last week. And this time, he brought Excuse some backup. He would like some revenge on who? On Drago and Maximo. Or, sorry, Maximo. Yeah, Maximo. Nah, there you go. That's what I there you go. Maximo. <laughs> Maximo. <laughs> I wonder if Chanik and Hell Knight shop at the same store. Because their shirts look awfully familiar. Oh no, they're definitely two uh two different ones. I don't know. They look familiar though. Maybe it's just cat people love that style. They certainly are stylish, I will say that. <laughs> Especially those ladies that <laughs> dance in in uh your doll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good place to go. Yeah. I'm not allowed to go down that street anymore, so I rent a hotel room at the Adventurers Guild, and then I watch with binoculars. Well, and, Jack, it's a good thing you don't go there anymore, because last time I went there, I got a status ailment. <laughs> and oh my god, Dr. Octopus making Jack, his way to the ring. Son of a bitch. That is a huge row. I think he may even be as big as Griff. Really, though, that's a big son of a bitch. That's... he's... Well... You go big or you go home, and Chanik went huge! He went huge. Our cameraman can't even crop it, so you can get them all in the picture. That's that's a big row. That's that. Well, you know, in the Empire, we have a saying about that, and um, yeah, that's a huge bitch. That's what we pretty much see. I think this applies to him. That's a huge bitch. I I certainly wouldn't be calling a man of that size a bitch, but well, you know. I wonder where he bought a white suit that large from. That is just freaking amazing. Well, part of my understanding is that they had to skin four dragons just to make the jacket. <laughs> well, no wonder Nate Hogg was pissed. <laughs> and Maximo making his way to the ring. Maximo! He, he sure as hell isn't backing down. Well, it's not about backing down. You got to worry about is getting your ass thrown hell down. Because that is a big guy. After the crap these two pulled last week, I sure, sure as hell um, hope they get what's coming to them. And did you notice what just happened before our cameraman changed angles a while ago? Maximo standing on the second rope was still only like one inch taller than that big guy outside. Standing outside. That is just crazy. From this shot here, it looks like Doc almost comes right up to that top rope while standing outside on the friggin' floor. Yes. Well, I'm standing outside on a friggin' floor. I don't know. This doesn't seem like uh, one of Drago's usual style matches. I don't think he's gonna want to be going into that ring anytime soon. 
<laughs> now that son of a bitch, I wouldn't be surprised if you just came out and started handing out t-shirts. Well, the fact of the matter is, he still has that championship belt wrapped around his waist. Yeah, he's done a lot to deserve that. Pretty ass belt, though. Looks like he polished it. Apparently, for one tin of the belt polish that he uses, costs roughly 300 million gil. Where the hell is this guy getting all this money from, though? Really? From his t-shirt sales. I have not seen one t-shirt. Oh, look underneath my look underneath my uh, jacket here, Blaze. See? I'm wearing the limited edition almost signed by Drago shirt. Only 50 million gil. <laughs> yeah, he almost, almost signed, signed this one. <laughs> Jack, is he the sign or is not? How do you how the hell do you get almost signed there, Jack? <laughs> because it comes with a certificate of authenticity saying that he almost signed this shirt. <laughs> That is just the most ridiculous shit I've ever seen. Let me guess, uh, the certificate has the official, um, what is it, Microsoft spreadsheet signature of authenticity. <laughs> well, yeah. It's, that's yeah, how all. printed them all. Copied them. And Janet coming out strong, looking for some revenge. Oh, my God. I'm just looking at this big guy that's standing outside that ring. I definitely think that he's the backup in this case. I would say so. But now more you of know, a... Hmm? I think that guy could reach up and slap Titan in the face. That is just a huge guy. <clears throat> I would hate to see what would happen if him, Bro, Ro, and Pat all got in the ring together. That whoever have whoever would have to fight them would be well, it'd be a huge undertaking there, Jack. A huge undertaking. <clears throat> Dude, Maximus. Maximus. Or sorry, oh, Maximo. Yeah, yeah it's still showing some of that resiliency. I certainly think that Drago picked the right person to ha have back him up. But we still haven't seen Dr. Octopus get into the ring there. Hey there, Jack. I wonder about something. What's that, Blaze? Suppose Dr. Octopus has eight of everything. I don't believe he's the octopus from The Spirit, which was a horrible movie based on a great comic. <clears throat> yeah, now you're going too far. You know, that is actually the greatest movie of all time in it's, the Empire. It's, it's... That's how you teach our robes. How they jump from building to building and pretty much do roguish activities. Do you all wear red ties? Why, yes, we do. Uh, Haven't you noticed that whenever you come to a cast room, we always have red ties on? You never put it together? We had black outfits of red ties and little red hats? Come on. That's actually a hmm, good point. A little <laughs> creepy, but... So what do the red ties represent, or do I even want to know? None of your damn business can't tell you that. It's a secret. It's, how, how do I find out the secret? Well... A couple of weeks ago, I invited you to join the army. Yeah. You know. Uh huh. They'll let you. They'll tell you that. I, I, I would. So, can I join and then shine a spotlight and then quit? Well, yeah. By quitting, you mean probably get uh, shot down by an enemy sniper or punched in the face by the warrior of light. Uh, yeah, sure. Why not? Hmm. Hmm. What's the benefit package like? Well, you pretty much stand there, wait uh, for a warrior of light to come in. You know, takes a while sometimes. And you know, my God, sorry to interrupt you, but Doc oh, just boy. came in. 
I think and he, he was waiting for that time so he could get Doc in there. And he just gave a huge power bomb to the that champion. That's a big man. He is just manhandling Drago, and Drago looked like he got a little lucky. They're able to use um, some leverage to his advantage to dump Doc to the outside. But I don't think it did him much good. <laughs> yeah. To Doc, that's roughly the equivalent of falling out of bed. And oh my god, Maximo just bounced <laughs> off of Doc running at him. For that, I believe the correct sound effect will be mm -hmm. We have seen Rose fall before. Well, we haven't seen him this tall before. And Maximo going for a count, getting nothing out of it. And the big man getting back to his feet. God. He lifted the man's leg up and it looked like a damn tree trunk. I'm not 100% sure, but I think those might be tree trunks. I think he is Groot. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm starting to think Maximo is regretting his decision of backing Drago. <laughs> I think he might have some cracked ribs at this point. Because that is a big man to stomp you in your chest. When you're when somebody's booting and Chanik just going after Drago just knocking him right off the uh apron. Now that was just a cheap blow. Well, I think after last week, I think he dis definitely deserves to give them a cheap shot. <laughs> well, they didn't force him into the match. And what's this? I think Chanik is going for a choke slam. <laughs> Completely nailed him with that choke slam. And I don't think that. Maximo wants to be anywhere near that corner, getting Chanik out of there. That's the best thing he could do. And Chanik wants Maximo in that corner. <laughs> They're back over on the wrong side. I don't know. This is back and forth action. They keep Irish whipping each other to each other's corners. <laughs> and it looks like Maximo finally got a tag and laying some stomps onto Chanik. I suppose it's payback time now, but there's no amount of stomps that can make up for those stomps that came from that big man. No, I definitely think Maxwell will be feeling that for a while. Yes. Going for a pin. You got stomping a mud hole in a man, then that guy, he looks like he could just stomp a crater in you. <laughs> well, if you... Just... Well, if you watch right there, I don't think Drago realized what he was swinging at. He took a swing at Doc, missed, and then kind of backed off. I think he realized afterwards <laughs> what he was doing. <laughs> it's like that sometimes, you know. You swing on a guy that's about four feet taller than you, and you just say, hey, maybe I shouldn't go through with this. <laughs> And Drago trying to do some uh, offense against this row, getting him in the corner and smashing his head into that turnbuckle repeatedly. But really, what can you do against a guy this big? Well, it seems like Drago is um, targeting the head. Would, th would that be a wise strategy, Blaze? Well, shit. His head seems to be the smallest part on his damn body. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> his arms are about the size of him. Damn chocobo wagon and his legs look like tree trunks. So yeah, why not? Oh my 
god, devastating shot right to Drago. And Drago still trying some offense, gets him in a pin. I don't think this will be enough. Nope, two count. <clears throat> Against a row this size, I you it would typically be go for the legs and try to knock it knock the uh, legs out from underneath your opponent. Those are some big ass names. Look like steel freaking beams on a bridge. I don't know there, Jack. I understand where you're coming from, but them's is some big names. And Drago getting the Two and three quarters. Maybe it was a sound strategy going for the head as uh, Doc seems to be in some trouble here. <laughs> Ch Chanik and Maximal were going at it. This is turning into an all-out brawl. That ref needs to get control of this. Do his damn job. Standing there like a little prick. And devastating spear from Doc. And it looks like Doc isn't done beating on Drago yet. You call that a spear? That man just got hit by a damn bus. That is nowhere a spear. Maybe a ballista. That is not a fucking spear. It's way too big. Drago is seen. Seemingly trying to put some offense out, getting a little bit in, but you've just got to imagine, Blaze. One hit from Doc has got to be the equivalent of 10 from. Oh my god, that was an awesome recovery by Drago. No other words to describe it. And Drago showing off the merchandise gets rolled up for a two count, look like. But, Blaze, you got to imagine that just the size of Doc, one of his punches would be the equivalent of 10 of everybody else's. I would just say one of his punches would just be overwhelming. That's that's where I could put it. Overwhelming. Like one of his punches would be the equivalent of at least miss five Mr. Shovels right to the back of the head. Well, let me tell you something. He's about eight Mr. Shovels. He's about eight Mr. Shovels and nine Miss Spades. But yeah. That's a big guy. Oh, huh. Miss yeah. Miss Miss Spade. Miss Spade. I I don't think I've ever met Miss Spade. I'm usually knocked out. So. Oh yeah. Miss Spade usually comes in after Mr. Shovel. Oh. Oh. She well. likes to do piercing attacks more than blunt attacks. But, you know. And Chad you know, just that's using that's Drago's cool. own T-shirt toss against him. He's sending a message here. <laughs> T-shirt toss. I kind of like that name there, Jack. T-shirt toss. Chanik <laughs> nailing... <laughs> Chanik nailing another choke slam. But I gotta know where the hell did he find that big guy from? Well, it wouldn't be very difficult to find a man that size. <laughs> you know what I mean, Chuck. <laughs> I mean, he, he surely sticks out like a sore damn though. And Drago sensed that spear coming. Well. Able to roll it into a T DDT and I think that work on uh, Doc's head from earlier. I think it's done its damage. You talk about <laughs> He My he, he saw God, it. did you see that blaze? Drago had to be thrown at least 10, 15 feet into the air from that. Well, <coughs> I, I believe I heard him shouting as he was at, at the top of the peak. I thought he said I could see my house from here. <laughs> <clears throat> and Drago's busted open. But I, I also think a little known fact. jumping attacks don't necessarily um, do much damage to old Drago because he is actually a dragoon part time. So 
he's used to flying and falling on his ass quite a bit. So, yeah. Oh, I know. I got the uh, limited edition Drago is a Dragoon t-shirt. <laughs> well, I tell you, you bought some crazy shit there, Jack. It, it looks really nice. It did. It, it, it's all in black, and then in, on the front it says, Drago is a Dragoon. <laughs> There's a whole set. There's a whole set. Drago is an astrologian. He's a machinist. Drago is a... I'm serious. You can get the entire set really, really cheap. Like, the entire set is only, like, 125 million gil. That's <laughs> really true. How much yeah. do you make? <clears throat> um, nothing. We you remember we both do this all for the love of, of the sport and and uh, Drago so nice. doing that superplex Actually, with Doc to the outside with that much weight. That's gotta just will break Doc in half. I think Drago might have hurt himself more than he hurt Doc. But yeah, I, that's not the bottom. But now throwing him to the uh, steel post there, and yeah, that that may have hurt Drago's back. But at, at, at what point do you just say enough is enough, and you just go for it? Like <laughs> I think they're kind of running out of moves here. <laughs> well, you keep going until whatever you're trying to do sticks, I suppose. And the ref continues to count. I think they're back at the count of eight. That was definitely a close one. Damn, that's a big man. Nailing another pile driver. That's what split open Drago initially. I can see the ref in the screen. Oh, yeah, it looks like Maximo was trying to get in. Now Drago just taunting Doc. I think he might be getting a little cocky. <laughs> I think that's that bloody bastard's just delusional. <clears throat> And that's a big swing from a big man. <laughs> hey, in, in, in Blaze, in battles, have you ever fought a row before? No, I haven't. Oh. I'm still here right now. I guess it's next on point in the two and three quarters. Drago refuses, <laughs> refuses to stay down. I specifically put on my application, no rows. So just in the chance of meeting with a row on enemy lines, are you allowed to just walk away? Well, yeah, that's the whole point of me putting no rows on my application. I show my papers. I say, hey, look, I'm not cleared to fight you, and I walk away. But what you if... Know, the Empire is very... what, what if what? What if the row comes after you anyway? I show my papers. You know, we're very, very... Um, strict about our paperwork up in the Empire and our wars, you know. Yeah, but what if, you know, like, if they you know, kind of like gun laws? <laughs> well, what if they just come after you anyway? If he charges at me anyway, after I show him the paper, I have the right to go in a cutscene and shoot him with my gun. You know, that always works. Hey, Waters are weird, and that was a hell of a kick from uh, Drago. Wait, 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 wait. What about what about Lala's? Have you been cleared to fight Lala's? Well, well, not really. I'm just cleared to capture them. So I'm more of a Lala trapper. What if you accidentally killed a Lala? I'd lose my license. Unless it was off the field of battle, then it just happens naturally, you know, at the god. They die all the time. Hey, for all this. Oh my god, and. The Emperor's Doc is up. still taller than Drago. 
and he sat him on the top. That is, that is just amazing. Well, I think he heard you because he's going to do it again. And going to the top rope wow. looks like, looks like a superplex. Yep, Doc fell maybe only half a foot. Well, Drago fell I think about ten feet. <laughs> half a foot. Well, I can't help but ask: Is there a doctor in the house? <laughs> yes, there is. His prescription is pain. <laughs> Well, I won't be refilling that. <laughs> and Dog tagging in Chanik. And Drago still fighting back. Usually I'm just a big fan of all of his merchandising, but I've got to say, he is putting on a clinic in there. It's about time to start a fight. <laughs> well, it seems... It does. Great. Well, it seemed like ever since he won the uh, Lunar Blades Championship, it kind of lit a fire in his belly. <laughs> I wonder if it's the same fire that got lit in my belly when I went down to Alamigo, to the Alamigo shack and got some tacos. That shit was hell lit a fire in my belly. <laughs> yeah, for me it wasn't my belly, it was my, well, you know, the next morning yeah. Yeah. It all starts from the belly there, Jack. <laughs> yeah. The grumbles and the rumbles and and two and three quarters. As Maximo just got tossed by Doc. That is a huge huge man I don't think anybody's really put too much damage on Doc no and I think he just scared off Maximo who's following him around the ring there Maximo got right back to his corner pretty quick <laughs> what you oh yeah I, I would probably shit my pants and then run to my corner <laughs> what I'm honest <laughs> no you're not you don't even wear pants get out of here and Chanik with a superplex to the outside. Seeing a lot of those superplexes tonight. Well, they are extremely, um, extremely devastating maneuvers. What I really can't stand is I'm looking at where Drago landed, and I think he landed there on purpose, right on the freaking advertisement. He, he, he really makes me sick sometimes. Well, it would be a good place to show off the uh, merchandise. And now this has just uh, turned into a fight outside the ring between Chanik and Drago. We really shouldn't be too surprised. Fighting it out in the middle of the ring. Doc just relaxing on the side there. I think he's getting fired up again. And oh my God, Maximo just gave Chanik a devastating kick right to the back. Chanik needs a tag. And he got it. And Doc just <laughs> brutalizing Drago. This all comes from that stupid poseman trying to show off his them shirts. I think they probably could have won it on multiple occasions, but no. He has to constantly advertise. Well, Doc, go for the pin. Maximo there just in time to break it up. And I think Doc's had enough as he just threw Drago again. And we just got reports that airplanes were complaining about a flying Drago in their flight line, flight path. 
Well, you know, Dragoon slide it, tell me. <laughs> that they definitely are... was a damn dodge. <laughs> <laughs> they can jump, but that wasn't a jump, that was a... <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it! <laughs> it was a, um, team up jump. <laughs> yeah. Class combo, I guess you would call it. You mean like from like Final Fantasy Advent Children when they're all grabbing Cloud and throwing them up higher? We don't and... talk about that. Yeah, but yeah, we don't talk about that. Advent Children was good. Drago going for a pin on Doc. Namely because it was an insult to the Empire, you know. Hmm. All of a sudden, all of them were black like us. That's crap. What, you don't, you don't even like the Turks? No, I don't. I, I like what you know in real. Drago's That's showing off I mean. the merch. He saw an opportunity to show off the merchandise right in the middle of the ring, and he took it. I think that may have been a mistake, as Doc is back on the offense. Well, he'll learn one of these days. Thought for a second there, Drago would be pulling something out, but instead he just got planted by a DDT and taking another brutal shot right to the head from Doc. Damn. That is a big fist. <laughs> Well, we just got this in. That fits is the equivalent of 228 Titans landing. <laughs> That's a lot of damn Titans. <laughs> Don't know what Shannon was uh, thinking there. Just got the double team. Well, why not? Well... <laughs> Got an extra kick in, I suppose. Better off leaving the big man in there. Oh my do his work. god, that's gotta be it. Drago's gotta be broken in half. And he's about to get nailed again. That's it. That's it. This has gotta be over. And Doc seems to be just enjoying inflicting the pain now. Nailing him with another spear. Big man. I think that guy has a future. And I think Maximo might be catching some shit after this match for actually breaking up the three count. <laughs> and it looks like Doc is climbing that top rope. Huge splash, my god! I reckon that's what Godzilla looked like when he was climbing. I don't even think Godzilla could get that much air. <laughs> and Drago showing off the merch in the middle of the ring again. Again, like that didn't just get his <laughs> ass kicked while ago. Oh, he's seems, hard headed. Seems to be working a little, a uh, little better this time. I don't know about Drago being hard headed. I think with the blood loss, he might be getting a little light headed though. <laughs> I think so, Jack. I think so. <laughs> and Drago, of Maximo, Maximo, going for the pin. Not even a two count. It looks like. Nope, maybe not. I thought Maximo might have been setting up a spear of his own. And Maximo seems more interested in going for Chanik. I don't know if that's a good idea. Letting uh, letting Doc get back up to his feet, giving him a little breather. They need to take that big man down or just... Make sure he doesn't get in the ring at all. 
I think that would have been a sound strategy. Keep Shannon in the corner. I wonder if he felt that spear. I really do. Do you mean like the one that uh, Maximo gave Doc? Yes. It looked like a little Dodge Neon trying to head on an 18 wheeler. It just, you know what I mean? It, it certainly looked like a smart car coming into impact with a semi. <laughs> yes. I, I don't think that was very maximum <laughs> overdrive. No, I don't think that had no maximum effort. Drago getting in to break up the uh, break up the pin. I think anybody except for Doc, the next person to get the pin, ref is down. This has just turned into an all-out brawl. Janik hmm. and Maximo getting to their feet. Refs up. And in comes Doc. And nails him with another spear. Goes for the pin. And Drago. Drago put down Chanik right on top of the ref. Breaking up the count. Ref is going to try again. Two and three quarters. These guys are really working together. It's a good team. I, I, I will say that. And Doc is now broken open. And Maximo going for the pin. Getting broken up by Chanik. These competitors have got to be getting frustrated at this point. Well, I figured the most frustrated one right now is probably Doc. Having that blood on that nice pretty white suit. No, blood doesn't come out very easily. But... Yeah, I know. I have to clean it off every time I meet Mr. Shovel. <laughs> well. L Lyman Spritzer does amazing, by the way. <laughs> Maximo giving Doc a shot right to the head. I don't know if that's going to do much. Well, you remember Drago's been working on that head for a while now. And Drago able to get the big man up and he's going for the pin. And that's a three count. Drago, the Lunar Blades champion, just took down that huge dock. What a match, everybody. What a match. It was back and forth and I'm 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 shocked. I'm amazed that Drago pulled that one out. Uh, 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 wow, that's all I can say. Is wow. There's not a single person oh. in that ring who doesn't have an injury. Now you see what I mean, Jack. People love to see those things, and they still had a good time. It just hurt. I don't know how much of a good time that they all really had, especially those two after Doc pretty much decimated them. They just couldn't put them away, or they did put them away, but Doc just couldn't put them away. I don't know. We're going to be real as well. Yeah, I get the feeling. Another victory for Drago and uh, Maximo. And I don't know what this means for the Night of Vengeance pay-per-view coming at you next week, but I'll be there. Jack Human signing off. Plays Garlemald. I can't wait for the vengeance to come.